Hey guys, it's Sam for Ryzen Lab, and in this Ryzen UV Basics video, we're going to be taking a look at the packing fundamentals. So let's uh, move on over to Ryzen UV and take a look. Okay, so first things first, we need to load a model. So I'm going to go to Files, Load with UVs, and choose our forward controls. And here we have our model. Now I'm just going to make our UV view full screen. And the first thing I want to talk about is map resolution. This is the resolution in pixels that the UV tile represents. So map resolution can be viewed in the UV set panel up here in this drop down menu. It's currently set to 2K. Or if we press the UV set panels attributes button, which is here, map resolution can be viewed here too. And again, it's set to 2K. You'll notice that in the drop down in the UV set panel, it contains options for common power of two values. Uh, this is for convenience. If you want to use a custom or non power of two values, these can be entered manually in this field here. These two values here and here are linked. So if I change this to say 4K, that will be reflected over here. And now we have a value of 4096. So let's change this back to 2K. And again, this is back to 2048. Okay, let's go over the margin and padding settings. These values are located here in the packing panel. For those unfamiliar with what these mean, the margin value represents the space around the UV tile in pixels. So if I zoom in here, you can see this. This is the margin. The padding value is the minimum space between islands in pixels. There's something else you should know about these margin and padding values. They're actually linked to map resolution. So my map resolution is currently set to 2K and my margin is 4 and padding is 16. But look what happens to these values up here when I change my map resolution. So let's increase this to 4K. And you'll see that my margin value is now 8 and my padding value is now 32. So they've been doubled. You'll also notice that nothing appeared to change in our UV viewport, but it did. It's just that our values were scaled up together. So the 0 to 1 tile space now represents 4K. The margin now represents 8 pixels instead of 4. And the minimum space between islands is now 32 instead of 16. There's one more thing I want to cover about these values being linked, and it's probably a question that you're asking yourself now. What if I don't want these margin and packing values at 4K? Well, don't worry, these values can be changed independently from the texture resolution. For example, I can change this margin value to, say, 30, and you see that it's changed here in the viewport. So we now have a new margin value for our 4K map res, but what's really neat is that your new value will be respected when changing your texture resolution. So if I change this back down to 2K, keep an eye on this margin value here, which is currently 30. That gets cut in half to 15. So let's put everything back to default. So I've got a 2K map res. I'm going to change my margin to 4 and I'll pad into 16. There's something else that happens when you change the map resolution. The texel density of your islands changes too. So I'm going to change to island mode and select this island here. And if we look at the information displayed in the viewport here, we can see the texel density of our selected island is 155 texels per centimeter. Keep an eye on this value as I increase our map res to 4K. Now the texel density of our selected island has doubled and is now 311 texels per centimetre. This is something to keep in mind if you have a set texel density plan for your assets. So working at the texture resolution you plan altering your texture maps in is a good idea. If you're not familiar with texel density or don't really understand what it is, I will be making a more in-depth separate video on the subject. OK, moving on. Next, we're going to talk about the distribute function. It is located in the packing attributes here. So if we click this attributes button, we have our packing attributes and the distribute outer tile islands checkbox is here. It's enabled by default and we're going to leave it in this state to demonstrate what it's doing. So 
I'm going to select a few islands here and hold tab and move them outside of the tile area. I'm also going to deselect everything. So I'm going to press a shortcut P to pack. You'll notice that all islands were evaluated, not only the islands outside of the tile, but the islands that are already in the tile as well. You notice they got moved out and evaluated. So let's undo that. And this time I'm going to pack with just these islands selected. You'll notice that this time only these islands were evaluated and moved into the tile. The islands that were already in the tile were left alone. And that's because I only had these islands selected. So I'm going to undo this again. And this time I'm going to turn off the distribute checkbox. I'm going to deselect everything again and pack with the shortcut P. Notice that this time the outer tiles were completely ignored and only the islands within the tile were evaluated and packed. Let's undo that again. And this time I'm going to pack again, but with my outer islands selected. So P to pack. Notice that this time, even with the distribute outer tile islands unchecked, the outer tile islands were actually packed, and that's because of their explicit selection. So the takeaway here is, what gets packed is dependent on whether distribute is on or off, and what is selected or not. So I'm going to turn the distribute checkbox back on, deselect, and repack everything with P. OK, let's talk about orientation. You just watch me pack everything, and you'll notice that all the islands are in a vertical orientation. This is because in the packing panel attributes, our initial orientation is set to vertical. So let's change that value to horizontal. Shortcut P to pack. Now everything in our tile is in a horizontal orientation, as you'd expect. But what if you want some islands to be vertical and some to be horizontal? This brings me on to global and local settings. In Ryzen UV, there are settings you can apply globally, meaning all islands, and locally, meaning select islands. A good example of this is initial orientation. So I'm going to select these islands here, and I'm going to change this value to vertical. You'll notice that our selected islands now have labels on them, meaning orientation vertical. So let's deselect everything and press P to pack. Now you can see that everything has been packed with a global orientation of horizontal, with the exception of our islands with a custom orientation of vertical. OK, so I'm going to reselect these islands again, and we can actually clear this custom orientation by crossing it off here. And now you can see the labels have gone. Just as a quick reminder from a previous video in this series, we can maintain the orientation of all islands without the need for custom orientations by packing with Pack Translate. So if we go up here and drop down this menu, you can see Pack Translate here. And the shortcut for this is Shift P. So the current state of our islands, most of our islands are horizontal, with the exception of these ones that we gave custom orientations to, which were vertical. But that custom orientation has now been cleared. So if I was to press the uh, shortcut for Pack Translate, which is Shift P, so a pack has taken place, but our horizontal islands are still horizontal, and our vertical islands remain vertical. So I'm going to switch our initial orientation back to vertical and perform a normal pack with P. And now all our islands are vertical again. OK, so let's talk about optimizing our orientation for a better pack. If we look at our tile label here, we can see that 55% of the tile area is being utilized by our islands. We might be able to improve this with this optimization set in here. It's currently set to off, so I'm going to set it to 90. This is uh, 90 degrees, and I'm going to press P to pack. You'll see now that our islands have a mixture of vertical and horizontal orientations, and that our tile coverage has now increased to 60%. So to make it clear exactly what is happening here, our orientation for all islands is set to vertical. But through this optimization setting, if Ryzen UV determines a better pack can be achieved by rotating islands by 90 degrees, it will do so. All right, let's move on to packing scale. And to do that, I want to load another file. So let's go to Files, Load with UVs, 
We don't need to save those changes and we're going to load this plain 10 by 10 OBJ. Okay, so this is a very simple model consisting of a bunch of islands. You'll see down here that most of them are hidden, uh, but we only need three anyway. And this simplicity should help you guys easily understand what is going on regarding the packing scale settings. The packing scale settings are located here in the packing attributes. And you'll notice there are two sections. We've got initial scale and scale optimization. It's really important to understand that these take place in order. So, initial scale sets the initial scale conditions for your islands. Scale optimization can be seen as a post initial scale operation, something that occurs after initial scaling has taken place. So, in the interest of showing you the initial scale settings without any confusion and absolute clarity, I'm going to set the optimization setting that comes after to none. Okay, so I'm going to start with the initial scale setting furthest to the left and work our way through. So let's start here. This initial scale setting is called keep, and it will keep the current scale of the islands. It may as well be called off because it will do absolutely nothing to augment the island scale in any way, shape or form. So if I were to pack now, so pressing shortcut P, nothing appeared to happen whatsoever in terms of their scale. So if I select these islands and actually scale them, so I'm going to select this island and hold tab and scale this down to about half the length of this tile here. And this one, I'll do the same as well, make it even smaller. Clear the selection and press P to pack again. As you can see, nothing happened to their scale. OK, let's move on to average texel density, which is this one here. With this setting enabled, Ryzen UV will evaluate the differing texel densities of each of these islands, calculate an average, then apply it to all islands when packed. So to help visualize this a little better, let's bring back the 3D view and turn on the checkerboard pattern. The planes in the 3D space are all the same size, but their corresponding UV islands in the UV space are all different sizes. This is why they have differing texel densities showcased by our checkerboard pattern here. This one here has the largest texel density because it is the largest in our UV space. So let's clear this selection and press the shortcut P to pack. So an average was calculated from these three islands and that average was then applied to all of our islands. And now they have the same texel density. The average of these islands obviously depends on the initial scale of them. For example, if I was to select this island and scale it right up like this and deselect the island, P to pack, now the applied average is much larger and all islands have a larger texel density when compared with the previous pack. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, let's move on to follow average texel density. And that is up here. This one's pretty simple to explain. This will resize any selected island or islands to match the average texel density of an unselected island. So let's do a little manual tweaking and I'm gonna grab this island, hold tab, resize so it's very, very small. And now I'll select this island here and press P to pack. As you can see, our selected island now has the average texel density between our two unselected islands. OK, let's clear this selection. The last option in initial scale is this. Match specified texel density. This will resize islands so they match the specified texel density in the texel density panel. And you can view that up here. It's really important to remember that the value in this field will not be respected unless your initial scale is set to TD. So I'm going to select the small island here. And in the texel density, I'm going to press the eye drop. So now we have the value of this small island. Clear selection and press P to pack. Now all islands have the specified target texel density. I'm going to undo this before we move on. OK, so now I want to go over the scale optimization settings. But before I start, I'm going to set our initial scale to keep. So the first optimization option in the list is none, which is already selected. This means that no matter what initial scale setting you are using, 
no optimization will take place after. With the settings I currently have, an initial scale of none and an optimization of none, you'd expect that no scaling will take place at all. So let's press P. And that's exactly what happens. No scaling of any kind has taken place. Let's make this view bigger again. And we'll move on to the next item in our list, which is auto fit. Auto fit takes the initial scale handed to it and then scales the islands up or down to utilize as much of the UV space as possible. So let's pack and go over the results. So let's press the shortcut P to pack. In this case, the initial scale was set to keep, so no change to the initial island size. Then this result was passed to AutoFit, and the islands were scaled up relative to each other to utilize the UV space more effectively. OK, let's undo. I'm going to use the same settings again, but this time I'm going to manually increase the size of the islands so they're outside the bounds of the tile. So select all of them, hold Tab, increase their size so they're huge. Deselect, press P to pack. This time, Auto Fit scaled the islands down to fit our islands in the UV tile. OK, one more Auto Fit example, but this time I'm going to change my initial scale to average texel density. Press the shortcut P to pack. All right, this time the initial scale of average texel density resized the islands so they are all the same size. Then after this, AutoFit optimized the islands to use as much of the tile as possible. So that's how AutoFit works, and more importantly, how it relates to the initial scale settings before it. Let's just revisit our optimization drop down briefly. You may notice that there is a third option here called Range. We won't be covering that in this video as we're going over the fundamentals of packing, and this is a more complex and advanced setting. So, one last thing before I go, and that is scaling factor up here. You can see it's greyed out currently, and that is because we need to make a selection. So I'm going to select this island here, go to our scaling factor and choose 0.5. And you'll see that we've got this label here now indicating that this has a scaling factor applied to it. I'm going to clear the selection and press P. And now you'll see that this island has half the texel density of the other island, so 0.5. I'm going to select this again and increase this to times two. And that's reflected here on the label. Clear the selection again and pack. This time you'll see that this has twice the texel density of our other two islands. If we want to clear the value from this, we can select the island and press the X up here. Clear the selection and pack again and everything's got an average. So that's the fundamentals of packing in Ryzen UV. Hope you guys found this helpful, and I'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed our video, please like and subscribe, and hit the notification bell for video updates. You can check us out on social media, Discord, and our website, links in the description. And if you're looking for more Ryzen UV content, you can choose one of these videos on screen. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.